going to see how are you welcome to the candlelit tales podcast i am sitting down with my brother aaron who is not actually here he is over zoom because he is uh in a different place and <laughs> spiritually <laughs> mentally physically he's elsewhere and that other voice that you just heard is uh julie Lockie, Hi. who is our guest today uh julie lived in ireland for a while i did lives in the uk now she seems traumatized by the fact that she's lived in ireland for a while there you okay there julie i was a blow in (laughs) that's what you guys that's what you guys called me call us a tattoo hello come on hey look at that she learned she learned many 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 things including irish mythology and hegarty's yes um and occasional (laughs) phrases in irish and uh she's come in to chat to us she's an actor we will tell you where to find her online she is um going to talk to us today because we have a podcast about three bad bitches I, and we thought we had an extra bad bitch so we threw into the podcast yeah i knew i should have done the intro there i um, not really that <laughs> was a lovely introduction it was, well done. Yeah, yeah. it was beautiful it was beautiful julie was also in the first play we ever wrote together um when before we actually started kind of tales yeah and true. yeah remember that you you were a mad that was a mad fairy, fairy wasn't i you were a cast i mean <laughs> You know, you, you do play it very well, you know. Put your face. You, you know, when you first met me, you were like, you really remind me of Louise from Bob's Burgers. And I was like, so proud. <laughs> it's the biggest compliment you know, anyone's ever given to me. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, it's very good to have you on the podcast, Julie. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry for the very long episodes that you had to listen to. Um, <laughs> unedited as well um, for these episodes, because these are coming out. Our, our recording it's just before they've actually all come out so you haven't even had the mastered full musicified um version of them so fair play for doing Dude. a bit of homework yeah well i thought that they were about an hour long each and i thought last oh. night i had to listen to three hours of it and i had to listen to it twice to get the gist of all the names and stuff as well so i understand it properly and i thought how am i going to cram six hours of this in? <laughs> and then they weren't they were 20 minutes and a little bit less and yeah. yeah so it was all it's all good i did my homework i've got notes I'm ready. Oh, wow. Mm. That's good, because mm-hmm. you know what? We needed a bit of, you know, English professionalism brought into the Candle Tales podcast, I think. We were, just getting, we were slacking off here too badly. Um, I'm not sure. Do I need to apologise again for everything? Probably. No. That, what did I apologise for the other day? Oh, God, I for can't Mana. remember. For Mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connie, yeah. Connie was telling us, we ran into Connie in Cork. Um, Connie was telling oh, yeah. us about being from Fermanagh and learning about the Ulster plantations and feeling really bad about it. And, and then the, the, everybody just turned to me. I'm like, again, sorry. <laughs> but look, it's good. It's good to get it online a few times. You know, I like it. You know, it's good. We're putting it out there. English people should apologise more to Irish people. People need to know. Yeah. Good, you know, yeah. And sake, if you yeah. think we're being really mean to this nice lady, look up the Ulster plantations. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at history. Like, yeah. we're not being mean at You'll feel weird. I can't, yeah. can't promise it'll be a good experience, but you'll feel real weird about it. <laughs> and this will seem funnier <laughs> and if you think they're being mean to me don't worry i hold my own <laughs> i have heckled these people she yeah has, you were there has. at the beginning i was there up. the first ever candlelit tales gig in stag's head wow were you it, yeah yeah when it was you two going should we give this a go we went yeah and we all just came down and got drunk and heckled you yep and mm. continued to come down and get drunk and heckle you yeah so one of my favorite things is when you two have a, a not a fight like a joke you, yeah, you'll slag each other off in the middle of it. That's my favourite thing. Uh, Jules yeah. would generally try and lob out a line that would encourage that to start off. Yeah. Which is yeah. kind of... Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's less of that on the podcast, I find, oh. because telling a story to a microphone, it's very hard to be funny. Yes, of course, you don't have... Yeah, you don't have the live interactive thing and you can't be... Yeah. yeah. There's not so the audience the, participation. The, yeah. the podcast stories, which I like, it's a different style. Yeah. I'm not... not you know, knocking the podcast because thanks for listening to our podcast. Yeah. But um, you know, Absolutely. it's different. Absolutely. And actually that that would take us on to our first bad bitch, I think, because the um I have these three stories that we kind of accidentally grouped together um in our mythical places uh, series. The first one we want to talk about uh would be Maka. And that, you've told that circa a few times live and it's absolutely side splittingly funny. And then (laughs) on the podcast, it's kind of, it just loses that. It just gets a bit weird. Um, Yeah, but it's also like that thing of, you know, it's slightly creepy, is very close to funny. It's just a tone shift away. So if it's not funny, but it's still kind of absurd, it's going to feel creepy Mm. and weird. Yeah. Rather than feeling like 
live it's funny plus when i was listening to them you've both got such lovely voices and when you're doing it i was just like oh it's like mindfulness you know it's a different vibe because i'm listening to it going oh, this is why i need to listen to it a few times because it was sending me to sleep not because it was boring but because it was relaxing and nice and in my yeah, ears yeah, yeah. it's also really weird when you're doing that and it's your mates yeah yeah Fair. And you're falling asleep listening to Sarika telling me things and I'm just like, that's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, but but and but again, you see the whole way through, I was wanting to make hilarious comments and there was nobody to do it. Yeah, you yeah. can't make jokes to an empty uh, empty microphone. It's really no. it's kind of kind of a bummer. <laughs> doesn't quite work, doesn't quite work. Well, it, it's also interesting. So I guess in terms of Maca, okay, so this is one of the versions of the naming of Navenfort. Obviously, um, you know, it's not the dead twin story. Uh, it's it's the other one, it's the alternative one. Do you want to give us a quick recap so people we kind of refresh, seeing as people fall asleep listening to these and might not. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, then I can heckle up. Okay, yeah, you can, yeah, okay. Go so, on. great, awesome. So, Maka uh, is the daughter of Eadrua, who's one of three kings of Ulster. They have a seven-year switch-off. There's Eadrua, and then there's Dihirva, and there's the fellow whose name begins with a C. Can I just say, can the British government pay attention? Seven years switch off, just change around. Just saying. It, 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 it's, <sighs> it's a good system. Mm. So, Adrua got killed, died in a, in, a, in a raid and ended up dying in Donegal in the waterfall. They named the waterfall after him. Tragedy. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and Maka, his daughter, who was a badass and a warrior walked into the other two kings and said so I guess I'll be taking his place then and they said no you are a lady you are not allowed um and I kind of in my head Maka is um legally blonde Irish mythology version you know okay, right wow very very femme, very beautiful, but very, very competent at the thing that she does. Oh, yeah. So no one and takes her seriously. Exactly. So they don't take her seriously. Yeah, because they said that she wasn't seen when she was beautiful and had all the gold and all the... She's got a, she's got a hoops on. She's got the lip gloss on. And nobody can see her because they're just like, mm, bird. Yeah, exactly. Underestimated. Underestimated. Right. Overlooked. So Overlooked. She challenges one of them, or one of them challenges her. I can't really remember. Uh, single combat. She fights so, the lad, yeah. She fights Derva, who's a bit older, and she thinks he's going to nominate a champion, but he doesn't. And so she fucking... Fool of a took. Fool of a took. <laughs> <laughs> he's clearly no match for her. He's out. She's amazing. She And she's kind of like, oh, he doesn't take me seriously because I, I, that in, in the story was where she kind of realises... He doesn't take me seriously because yeah. of a woman. The only way I'm going to get him to take me seriously is by killing him. And then he's going to be like, it'll be, this is why it's funny. Like, he's dying. At, oh, yeah. Uh, I probably should have been less of yeah. a message. This isn't yeah. really the funny bit. This is still like the preamble. To I know. The funny it can bit. be okay, funny. Okay. But it okay. is. Yeah, also, yeah. It's like he shouldn't have been the old uh, Billy Big Bollocks. Should he? Should have. No. Should have no sent a champion. Should be Billy Big Bollocks. No. no. So then she marries the other fella. So there's one king of Ulster left. Yes. Uh, whose name I can't remember. Begins with a C. Yeah, she marries him because he's yeah. a bit sexy, and uh, then she basically becomes the king of Ulster. He steps aside and is like, "You're better, go for it." So she's the ruler of Ulster now, and uh, and then she realizes he's got a rake of sons down in Connacht who aren't very happy about how she's taken over, and she's obviously the same age as them. So like, they're not going to inherit the kingship from her because she's a lot. She's she's the same generation as them. They so, can do maths. Yeah, they can do maths. They're like, hang on, she's our age. She's going to be alive as long as we are, probably longer, because statistically women live longer than men. Um, and so they get they get really annoyed. They go down to Connacht. They start stirring up rebellion and trouble. And she takes off her glad rags, goes down to Connacht, and seduces them one by one, lures them into the forest. They don't recognize her. This is the bit now that gets just me every time because it's like, so they, she literally takes off the hoops, takes off the lip gloss, puts on some shit robes. I, like, it's still clearly very hot, but no one actually sees the person at all. Then has a, a camp with them and gradually seduces one brother after another. After another. And they leads them away into the woods. None of them caught, and none of them find it weird. 
to be like, hey, I've just shagged your brother. Come with me. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. surely. Oh. Maybe she was going back and going, I've, he's, he's spent. He's in, yeah, he was useless. Maybe. Your turn. Come oh, with yeah, me. Maybe. We never got that far. That's probably the line. Your man was too drunk. He had too much. Yeah. Um, That's the line. Know. That's what that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. so she uh, she <laughs> it turns out what she's doing to them in the forest is not trying to shag them. She's just knocking them out and hog tying them. Yeah. Uh, so she has a pile of uh, good old hog ties. <laughs> <laughs> pile of stepsons um, in the forest, and she marches them back to old story at, at sword point mm. and says, "You're going to dig me a fort." to show that you acknowledge me as the king of Ulster. And then she takes off her brooch and she traces the outline of the ramparts of the fort. And Navin Fort is kind of like, there's there's an outer and then there's an inner that's kind of up on top. So um, she traces it with her brooch and that's why it's called Awan Maka, Maka's brooch. I love that she doesn't kill them or like beat them. It's just she wants free labour because she understands how much it costs now prices of sword and she's clearly been at grand designs and gone you know as foreman of this shit show i'm just going to keep prodding you no do it like this <laughs> don't dig there dig there don't you dig there yes there. yes that's that's a very good observation Julie. yeah thank I, you for that insight here. Exactly. Yeah. Lowering right. tone. <laughs> yeah no that's that's exactly what we needed um i always kind of go okay hang on is this i mean mac is brooch or the twins of mac who translates these things is it impossible to get the actual original translation? Because original translation of what? I mean, it's not written down. You know what I mean? Like old, old Irish. Like I think that that whole thing of the the lore of place names in Ireland and the Dinchanicus is one of the reasons it's really interesting. And you get those different variations and those different name stories is because, you know, when was it written down and by whom? Because yeah. Yeah. these names go back way before we had writing. And apparently the word for twins and the word for brooch sounds and looks kind of the same because they're also those are also stories that are separated by hundreds and hundreds of years. So the language probably changed along the way a bit. Mm. So maybe it was the brooch of Maka, but at a certain point, the word slide and slid and came together and then it was the twins of Maka. And then somebody went, well, hang on, that that does that story doesn't make sense anymore so there's another story then we can fold that into this place you know what i mean there's and kind more of than one person called maca and there's so just there's just the, three in irish well then yeah yeah there's a few there's a few it um it, 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 it's in to make it more confusing it's in arma which is ard maca which is a different maca again um, who's the wife yeah. of Nemed who gets who who dies and is buried there so yeah and what what happens to to himself, the Sean Connery guy who she marries. Oh, he's the king guy. He's there. He's all right. He yeah. doesn't mind his son's sweating. Nah, doesn't seem to. Doesn't make any objections anyway. Fair. I mean, that that would that's a very valid point. Though it's like, so you went down, you seduced my sons. They all went with. Well, like, she's gonna leave that bit out. I would have thought she'll be like, they were mean to me. Uh, <laughs> they were mean to me. And, so I, I prodded them, and now they're here. <laughs> they, Do you want probably... your on sweet or not? Shut up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, know. like good, yeah. good to get a nice insight into what the bad bitch would be thinking. Thank you. Indeed, <laughs> that's how I would feel about it. Yes, yes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I would not, wouldn't have known, wouldn't have known. Yeah, um, no. They disrespected me, and now we're here. Yeah. Um. Was, so this is kind of in my typology of the three bad bitches. I said this before we started recording. I feel like Maka is on the mo- much. She's on the like, on a scale of reasonable to unreasonable mm. you know burn it all down versus like be quite restrained in your way of do- doing things i feel like maca is the more reasonable more restrained person because yeah. like she's only after what she's due which mm. is the kingship of ulster which she's you know is kind of sees as being her her birthright mm. and she doesn't go on any mad rampage killing sprees she's you know she doesn't even she doesn't kill the sons who are rebelling against her she puts them to work instead so she's quite measured and she's quite restrained Mm. whereas i think you know then you go down to sheen which we'll talk about now Mm. and she's way less measured yeah she's fully burn it to the ground so can i say but kind of justified when i started listening to it yeah and to obviously people who have already heard the story so it's no spoilers and if you haven't <laughs> unlucky uh stop it immediately and go listen to the story um at the beginning i was like who hurt you 
because my god woman it's i mean it's bad yeah it's really yeah. bad she's on one and she's then at the end, you go oh okay oh he hurt he, you. he hurt you okay yeah. now i get it get still it. still excessive but you know it's, yeah i get yeah. it yeah yeah which is kind of like yeah she's yeah. like she she exacts a terrible terrible vengeance but it's kind of okay so do you want to do you want to catch everybody up with a little overview of that story or are sure you... well yeah sure i guess you know she comes into um uh to have happily married uh king and queen i think i'm you know i don't know um oh god i blanked the name is it Oki? It's Mark Markarta. No, uh, Mark 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 and casts the wife out. She's very upset. She goes to a few clerics who who think your one's definitely a, a, a she woman. So then, or a she, uh, a woman of the she. And gradually, you know, she just kind of kind of puts more spells upon the king, and and he sees war outside his door, and and gradually all of the rocks are turned to what seems to be a horde coming at them and literally burns the place down to the ground, but it's an invisible force that he's fighting against. And McCarthy McIrk uh, is the first king to both burn and drown at the same time because he jumped into a whole cask of wine while the whole place was burning down around him. And the sucker punch of it all is that Sheen actually fell in love with him and died of a broken heart. So that's kind of uh, Sheen in a nutshell. Oh, but her her motivation that you find out at the end as she's dying of a broken heart is that he killed her father. Yes, sorry. I left and he slaughtered her family. And so that's why that's she's why. been on this thing. Um, well, it, it goes back to like, again, to be king, MacArthur had to kill many people to get where he was. He had to, you know, desecrate families, ruin places and, and build up his alliances and it's peaceful now, but it's kind of the, the shadow of the past coming forward and the shadow of, of what you've done before haunting Fell you. Off in the way. Of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> that was a visual joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just Once very again. hard to take you seriously when you talk. <laughs> Not to do it's hard that. to take me seriously when I talk. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah, okay. So we're, I, I we're getting that. down... We get down to the nuts and bolts of this gritty story, and it's terrible and it's awful. And you know, there you are saying whatever you say, it's just going to be ridiculous. Um, well, I do think that when you first uh, introduced um, Yuan, I'm calling him Yuan and himself because I can never remember the names or the pronunciations. Um, the king, dude, he sounded very Clooney esque because I think he had a chiseled jaw and he was graying a bit. And I was like, oh, Clooney, yeah, I can see why she's got that going. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Ding dong, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Girls got to do what a girl's got to do. Yeah, He's... but then, but then, poor woman. By the end of it, but also the wife. The wife. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she, why yeah. would you take kindly to it? Of course, you wouldn't. And she's got all the kids, and she's really pissed off. Yeah. But she's um, skulking about, having a look in, not letting it lie. I'm like, dude, no contact. Cut it. Cut it off. Off you pop. You just leave it. You're just hurting yourself. <laughs> It's not making it any better for you. I like how this is becoming an advice column for people in the myth. <laughs> in myth. Oh my god! Spin off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Um, <laughs> you totally do that. Send it to Jules and just be like, "Babe, no, <laughs> Queen, please." <laughs> there you go, Woman that King, is... please. There yeah. you go, Woman King. See, I've learned that. Yeah. See, there you go. There you go. Um, but it, 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 I guess the story is, is kind of the, the, the fatal tragedy of somebody who's hell bent on revenge and not seeing what's actually in front and not be able to tell the wood from the trees as to what's in front of them. Yeah. And, you know, when she's made that decision from the get go and you, you know, fall out for all, all you want to do is get back at that person. Um, and, you know, ultimately, it'll be a bad ending for yourself, no matter what See, is kind we of... About but that. slightly moralistically, you kind of can't get away from the moralistic element of this one. Like, you know, we don't like yeah. doing it, but it's no, kind of there, like... It's a moral dilemma, because it is that thing of, like, she's just, she's decided or she's vowed revenge, and she's kind of stuck now. And she decides, 
which I this is the bit where I give advice to mythology characters and my my advice is always be 10,000 times more horrifying and ruthless um, <laughs> she gets too close she gets too close mm-hmm. she wants to destroy him completely but she gets too close so she's living with him mm. she's making him go and fight in these like pretend wars all day she's feeding him substanceless um fairy food probably slim fast all night and like he's wasting away he's getting weaker and weaker everyone's but like she gets too close and she sees him getting weaker and more pathetic and more like oh mind me and she's she kind of starts to feel sympathetic for him because you would because she's slowly destroying this guy and that's hard to watch so even if she's still like even if she she didn't like him at the beginning i could see a version where she's like by the end she's like oh god mm. but then she's seen all the all the pain he's been through yeah and i think it's quite nice at the end when the the wife and sheen have a chat because mm. they're both broken hearted that he's dead and she's like well why did you do it then if you loved him why did you do it and they have that moment which is nice but also she could have not killed him dead twice which is essentially what the, the old uh, Johnny Two deaths when he drowns, <laughs> in a, drowns in a barrel of wine and burns alive. Yeah. Like you'd hope that he drowned. Just his top. And then yeah. like, yeah, just like didn't yeah. feel the burn. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just got a lung full of Merlot. What did they have back then? Probably not Merlot. Probably Merlot. Probably. Probably. <laughs> probably. Oh, no, 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 no. I assume Probably Merlot. Merlot spelt with lots of D's and B's and H's yeah. and lots of vowels. M-E-H-R. Murder let it go. Murder for the low. Cheating in Scrabble. It is one where you kind of find like sympathy for Sheen because at the end you go, oh, like it doesn't explain. Can I catch me in that story always is like it doesn't quite explain why she fell in love with him i know i know we're, we're kind of like seeping into the sympathy i think it's his gentleness i it was is described as like even as he's you know trying to fight off all these hordes he's still gentle and kind and to the people around him and in some way you know uh whatever advances he's making towards her or whatever he's kind of dealing with her is always gentle and kind even though he's just cast out his wife and kids which again is like Red flag area. Yeah, but well, red, yeah, flag. red flag. But well, then she he... also kind of voiced him. Yes, exactly. So that's not on him. That's on. Isn't it though? I know that. a lot of people who will be in love with some absolute train wreck human beings if they're good at one thing. Yeah, but and I, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, but if, but if you if if she has actually bewitched him, that's magic and that's beyond his control. It's beyond his control. I mean, he's if we're in love that's... with her, but I don't know if all of his actions are beyond his control. I don't yeah. know. Oh, well, Do then he's a I mean? tit and he deserves to drown in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting him off. Hard turn. Like, oh, hard turn from Jill. Yeah, Sam. yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's just that kind of gray area that you don't really get to to just because she arrives in and she that, says, Cast her joy. He's like, Yeah, cool, no bother. Now, is that a spell or was she just yeah. super hot? And uh, didn't he get her when he was hunting? Yeah. Doesn't he come yeah. back with her like he goes, a he goes hunting. Deer. He goes hunting on Samhain. He goes hunting on So Samhain. I'm thinking she's got really hairy legs for a start. Skinny, hairy and legs. A, and a bit of a hoof going Interesting. on. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. So Yeah, I mean like Yeah, it just, it's not it's not cool for the wife. It's the saddest one that I had to listen to. For uh, many reasons. It's the it's the tragic one. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you didn't listen to the set the alternate version of the naming of Maka, because that's definitely sadder again um which i'd actually be i'd be curious to hear if people have a preference for the the name how yeah. uh, maca got its name because or how uh, maca got its name because i meant to say earlier the the grower magnasa one of the ulster uh, uh the red branch where he's racing the horses against maca mm-hmm. that doesn't quite make sense because it's in now maca already so well I they're in his quite... they're in his fortress as yet unnamed maybe yeah maybe Maybe, but, but you know, maybe it had another name that's been forgotten. Same mm-hmm. fortress. Oh, same fortress. Same area. It's the same, same fortress. Same, and it's same fortress, same. different bollocks. Same fortress. <laughs> yeah, different yeah. decades. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, I, I'd be curious as to uh, what people would prefer uh, or what people have a preference to in terms of the brooch of Maka or the uh, yeah. twins of Maka. Um, is it okay to just mention that my favourite one is, is Scythe? 
that yeah. it is okay. that is my favorite and it is really heartbreaking yes but that is, is my favorite of all it the is ones the, the saddest I heard one and remember <laughs> Because yeah, Lipsy when I've seen you. Yeah, that one and the one where you talk about a crone and you talk about the um, uh, upkeep of the undercarriage. There you go. Oh, nice! I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, and yeah. that was very subtle. Thank you. Um, yeah. For me as well. I mean, come on. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That was. Um, Hi. And for Hi. anyone who has who doesn't know what the hell she's on about, we'll be talking about Kaliax or Kayax. Yeah, we will. Um. Because I, I I've got a pronunciation difficulty with the yeah it's kayak apparently like kayak. Kayak. Yeah, yeah, kayak. kayak yeah um yeah yeah depending um, on where you're from my Donegal yeah. friend calls it a kayak that was one of the funniest yeah. ones though you were all creased up you were oh, crying laughing crying laughing brilliant we'll have Great. a couple I think we have a couple of kayak, kayak stories coming we uh, do with the rest of this series Later and last but not least on this post show chat we yes. want to talk about Beckima. No. So this one, in when I was outlining my kind of typology of bad bitches and was like, there's Maka. And then yeah. I feel like Sheena's kind of in the middle because mm. she goes too far, mm. but she's got a good reason. Mm. And yeah. then there's Beckyma. Yeah, and repentant. Mm-hmm. And then there's Beckyma, who is full bitch, full butter, burn it all down, full no fucking reason, don't care, gimme. Mm-hmm. I disagree. I love Beckyma. Like, I actually think there's like, there's a fucking story there that needs to be written about Beckyma. Beckyma of the one tonight. She gets doesn't mean she's not out. interesting. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No. I'm oh, curious, she... but I think, I just think like in terms of what she does in the story, there's no justification given and there's no like, but anyway, so, so yeah, why do you on, love tell her? Us, tell us. Okay. Okay. So she gets cast out background. of the, the she, she, her only thing is she gets cast out of the other world, right? Um, and to, again, recap very briefly on the story: Beck Milan's Mary uh, like uh, comes and meets the king. Uh, uh, fuck it, it Concaid Cahog and Hoth, and, and uh, comes back and basically becomes the the queen of the land. The whole place is ruined. Uh, a blight takes over the land, and Art, son of Khan, has to go off and find a way to defeat her. Now, she kind of tricks him into a couple of chess games. There's a few little bits and pieces that I won't get into because it's a long story. But essentially, um, uh, yeah, they try a couple of things to, to cure the land. Art has to go off and find a, a, a fairy princess, basically. Bring her back to her. Yeah, Art, Art is sent because <coughs> Khan goes to try and find a sinless child because they're told that if they commit human sacrifice and mix the blood of the, of the child with the, with the soil and Tara, the blight will be lifted. And so Khan Cade Cahuk goes off searching for a, an innocent, like the most innocent, innocent child that there can ever possibly be. And then uh, Bakuma kind of maneuvers, um, or sorry, Khan goes off looking for the child and then Bakuma maneuvers Art into going and rescuing a fairy princess, but she thinks it's going to be lethal and he's going to die. Absolutely. And so, so that's Delvkin. And she comes in and calls herself Delfkin. Now, this background story is completely un, unwritten. And I have no idea why, A, she calls herself Delfkin. She gets kicked out of, of um, the she world because she is of the wanton eye and basically slept with someone who isn't her husband. And I all... thought it was of the wanting eye. I thought it was a greed thing. Yeah, the yeah. want. The, yeah. So like w- 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 the wanting eye, the, the lustful eye, that's the way I read it. So she would she But that could be lots of things that can be could sleeping be with and just being a greedy little sod, you know? But she but the, the reason is because she was on no, again, this is this is written down with with a a little slant, I imagine, but she was unfaithful to her husband. So that's the reason she was get no, I didn't lean too heavily in that in that story because I don't particularly like that as like the reason she's kicked out. And but it oh, really makes makes me kind of go, hang on. So she was kicked out for being unfaithful to her husband. She then arrives to Ireland for the love of art, but then sees a better opportunity. And since all of the fairy mounds are closed off to her, says, well, fuck it anyway. I'm going to stay here and, and marry the king. And marry the dad. Turns so out the on the side. She's kind of ruined the land. But kind of went, eh, is that really my fault? I mean, really? It's kind of the king's fault. It's on the king. King should be keeping his land sources. Yeah. And he's got a plan involving some kid that I don't need to know about. And then all of a sudden, yeah, that all happens. She, she's not involved with the sinless couple thing at all. She's just like, la, 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 la. No, what except that she, she knows that she's the cause of the blight and she yes. doesn't want to go. Yes, but she doesn't burn it all down. She, she, she's very passive. She's very passive. 
She only has a bit of, okay, she's not that passive. She's not that <laughs> passive. Oh, Aaron. She's, she's, <laughs> oh, Aaron. Do you know the advice column? Yeah. It's Aaron now. It's Aaron now. Yeah. <laughs> Just because she's pretty doesn't mean she won't ruin your life. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you told me that before. I, I'm so glad you said that. No. I have. <laughs> we oh. both have over the years. Many people have. Many times, in fact. Yes. And yes, poor Aaron. And yet. Um, um, yes. Now, I, I just I find her a fascinating character. I think it's it's one of those stories I'd like to come back to and like do a perspective swap and get like, get you to tell the Beckham. Uh, that, like, I, that I can kind of see that because if you if you went into like what's her deal with Delvecum? Yeah, why yeah. did she pick Delvecum as an alias? Because Delvecum is this woman who's like locked in a glass tower and has two monsters for parents mm. and is really hot. Genetic Because nobody's going to come looking for her. I guess I that was kind of what I was thinking. So it's yeah, a safe identity. Maybe. It's, it's she's a, heard a tale about her and she's like, sounds like well, a good name. She's, she's stuck in a glass tower. Yeah. She's not going to turn up and contradict me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually probably very, very, very safe and, and, and makes sense. I think there's, well, not that I think, but like I was just moved that there was something more to it than, than that, just an obvious, ah, oh, that's a safe name. It's kind of like, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I, I feel like, was, was, was she involved in that somehow? I don't know. Well, I don't that's know. Like, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You, you could, that's the thing with it. And it, it obviously, it does change it if, uh, when when I was hearing about it, that it was the the um, the kid who they got to use as a sacrifice, who was without sin, was there, and then an old crone, I love an old crone, appears and goes, "Yoink! You're not having yeah. him. You can't have him." And that bitch over there, yeah, Liza Minnelli, full of lies, get her out. Full of lies. And uh, I, I just quite <laughs> liked that she came in and went, nope. And it was the way she said, the way I heard it, um, she's full of shit, she wrecks everything, she's got a wanting eye, she's greedy. And it felt like she was a Kardashian and she was all about capitalism and greed and poutiness. That's what I got. And um, and there you go. So, but if you if you tell it that, well, she she fell in love with another guy and, and couldn't get away from her husband and her actual husband was horrible and so she had an affair and and then she got chucked out and it's all like the woman yeah. who gets blamed and blah 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 and then she got thrown out of her whole land like yeah it's really shit and she needs a new identity and if you put that different spin on it I don't feel quite so sorry for her however I do think that she knows that now she's here the blight is her problem yeah. yeah, because sometimes when there's a blight and someone is to blame and they pretend it's not their problem, it doesn't go well. <laughs> History looks poorly on them for years to come, <laughs> especially at rugby games. Maybe she doesn't know this yet. There'll be songs about them. There'll be songs about them. And what will happen is she'll go to a pub in Ireland one day and she'll get tricked into singing this song, which she thinks is a bit of diddly eye die and a bit of a laugh, right? And she'll be singing along. She's got no idea. It's about her and how much everybody else hates her. <laughs> what was the song? All of them. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Even the one on the bus to Cork the other day. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, was that, like that, that wasn't the song so much as the fact that they kept getting up the ra in between the verses. Ah, oh dear. Drunk. Seeing you smiling there, Limerick boy. <laughs> <laughs> drunk, drunk rugby fans on a bus. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It was the hurling, wasn't it? Or the gun? No, it was, it was the rugby fans. Oh, it was oh dear. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway, I mean, you know. I think. I don't I, 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 yeah, I think the embodiment of Beckman is just, you know, Julie Lockley right now. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I also it, think art's a bit like, goes off to on this long quest, which is very questy. And mental. Very, it's very, the most mental quest of all. Like, it's very sorry. questy. It's a bit, it's a bit just, Harry, Harry Potter. She's, yeah. yoinked, she's yoinked to that from there, hasn't she? Um, well, it, there's that. so much in it. Like, I, I kind of, I love that story. And I was kind of, I was trying to truncate it. And I made a very bad job because first time I recorded it, the audio was wrong. Second time I recorded it, uh, I, I, I couldn't finish the audio. And then the third time, it, was just, it became longer each time I went back to record it. So um, it's anyway, a long ass story. There's a lot of bits to it. Mm. I think it would be interesting. Yeah. Be interesting to do a swappy one where we dovetail it a bit and maybe maybe yeah. do yeah. a 
or do yeah. it as the second half of the show now that we can do live shows again. But yay. he finally, uh, yay! He finally falls in love with some woman on an island. Yeah. And then she's like, stay with me. He's like, nah, I've got shit to do, bitch. And then yeah. off he goes. Yeah, yeah. And then Where's... he's like, on to the next one. I'm like, oh, I've never known love like this. Um, didn't you just leave? You just... Uh, okay. So R uh, is... Cre- uh, yeah. Again, her name, I couldn't really pronounce. It's like, Credna. 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 Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think it's Credna. Yeah, well, she falls in love with him. He's like, oh, they're a nice pair of boulders that I lay my head on. Boulders, <laughs> dear Lord. He's really, really appreciative of her Egyptian cotton thread count. Yes. And he just needs somewhere to stay. He just needs somewhere to crash for a bit. And also all of the advice that will allow him to succeed in his quest. And he can't yeah, he... help it if he's gorgeous and she falls for him. I mean, geez. Yeah, yeah. no, he, he was pretty up against it if he hadn't met her in Paris. He was pretty Oh, he was dead. Against. He was he's fully dead. dead. Better than fully a dead, dead thing. Dead. But to but, be fair to him, he does know that he needs to leave. Otherwise, everything's screwed. Yeah, he's so, worried about, he's I'll worried worried about his, his, his home. It's one of those moments where I'm like, right, okay, how many kind of weird smells or mushrooms were, were, were they having when they were, you know, writing this one down? Because that one's just, it goes batshit crazy out of nowhere. Bonkers. Batshit. I think the moment where it was all of the hags with the, blisters in their hands try and grab them and throw them into a cauldron full of boiling lead that I was like lead okay this lead, is like mm. yeah <laughs> lead like lead what? like the fuck? <laughs> yeah it's boiling lead. very specific from merlot to lead yeah what were they going to make with him i know a lot yeah, of pencils ice mountain giant toads a fuckload of lions for no reason oh yeah and all eel like lions. as if that's a thing like oh, oh yeah a giant all eel all eel the serpent from the fion story just yeah. pops back up to fight art for for also the parents he, of delfkim even if none of that else other stuff was there you have doghead yeah. whose name is doghead Doghead. yeah ah, she's who yeah. has weird like old lady breasts you yeah. know the kind of really really saggy kind of empty ones yeah, and a yeah. dog head just skin say what you see <laughs> that's how they named it that's apparently her whole deal yeah yeah that's and it. then a giant and they're the parents but they're also warrior. guarding her in the tower they're also keeping her locked up in a glass tower where she's her own kid uh, yeah, yeah, I, well, I can I see what you mean story. by the, there is an intriguing backstory here of like what the fuck what is the happening fuck? there. Oh, Maybe they were twins and she got out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, there no. we go. Yeah, and see? was Doghead always Doghead? Like, was she puppy head when she was little? Like, was she ever <laughs> cute? Was she ever puppy head? I don't know. Maybe, maybe puppy head, a puppy headed little girl could be. I could see that being real cute. Yeah, and on the twenty first, yeah. they went your dog head now. Sorry. Your dog. There you go. There you go. Um, I do love the fact that he he, he they it don't ends up being a whole transformation battle though. It's like right, you're a giant, can't fight you, gonna be a bird, can't catch you. Do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> sword in the stone. Remember at the end with Mim and yeah. and Merlin when they have the fact that was my favorite bit when I was yeah. a kid watching there's, that. There's loads. There's loads of Irish myth stories that end up that, and and I think Celtic myth in general because I think that there is a, there are Arthurian ones where they do that shape shifting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the lad of skins. Bulls. Yeah, the lad of the skins has a shape shifty battle. Um, the the bulls and the tawn do the shape shifty battle. So it's a it's um, a thing, but it's gas. Yeah, and he I love that he uses Kuroi Magdara's hazel rod just as a little bit yeah. of a like, you know. Which like, again, like, again, I, I like the introduction of Beckham's like foster sister, who's just out of nowhere wearing visibility cloak, goes down, nicks the hazel rod, and then comes back. And helps her win the game of chess. Which is all right with her then. So which is, is yeah, obviously not everybody in the she. Yeah. And th- and I that's the whole grey area of that. like, mm. so she's been cast out of, and the she mounds have been close to her, but like not ev- like her si- her sister's pretty happy with her. Her mm. sister's happy pretty cool her. with her, yeah, wearing an helping. invisibility cloak and helping her out and knocking over chess pieces and being was me. Was was it just one king of the of the she that just got pissed off her for sleeping with someone else? You know. Who did she sleep with? Was it him? And then she got annoyed with him and never called him back. She never writes. She never texts. I feel used. Him. Yeah. Maybe that was it. Or a brother. His brother. Ooh, oh my not, god, brother. Not her brother. His brother. Right. Maybe. Yeah, got, that could have. That could have been. It's so many. So many. There's so many. many. There's, and maybe's. 
There's so many it's... possibilities no. for people to sleep with that will annoy lots of other people. But it, it, it does start it, it, it does start off the whole art art son of Khan being the king, and then you never come across well, I've never come across uh, the wife Telkim again. Mm. No, because art is the the father of Cormac McCart. And when art meets Cormac McCart's mother, um, the druid's daughter, he doesn't have so, he doesn't have any children. No. So whatever happens next, we know what ha- we know how art dies because he dies in a in a fight with Louis McCann. But um, there's a there's a missing bit in the middle. I think he dies in I don't I I don't know if he's ever the high king or if he if he dies kind of fighting for it. Mm. Do you well, know what I mean? Which is kind of interesting as well because he's he's a backstory of a warrior who's you know someday going to be king, but he doesn't actually. Doesn't I don't think he lands that. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, interesting. But then where does she go? After that, yeah. Well, that's the whole unwritten story. Every, how many lands are there? Yeah, there's the she and there's the this bit. Do they mm. send her to England? Yeah, and then she shakes <laughs> it again, and now she's a funny Boris. looking man with a terrible haircut. Boris, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Boris, Becky man. I mean, it fits. It fits. Greedy, it fits. wanting. It, it fits. fits. Doesn't know when to fuck off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. The blighted it's land is all is all their fault, and they and they just sit there being like, "Mom, probably not me. Maybe we should kill some more children." Yeah, I could see Boris doing that. Yeah, that's my Boris voice. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, yeah, could possibly work on it a bit more. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Judy, which I, was I, your... I I refuse to put in the fucking effort. <laughs> yeah. to take the piss out of that. There'll be another yeah. twatty Etonian that nah. you have to copy in a couple of Boy. weeks. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Judy, which was your favorite story? Of the three bad bitches, which one did you well, does your heart want to hear again? Um, now the last one, now Becky Mo, because I, oh. I have more questions mm. now. Yeah, Sheen was heartbreaking, and I don't want to go there again. Fair enough. Uh, but I did. I liked Maka was my favorite at first. Nice. And I, st- I mean, I love all of them, but um, because I just think, yeah, you go, girl. I'm always underestimated. Yeah, because I'm small. You're tiny. Mm. And, uh, tiny little English arms. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and hands. And hands. Tiny, tiny hands. little English arms. Um, yes. Uh, it, all the better to hold all the money. No, that's done. <laughs> I've got nice. Uh, nice. Oh, money. That's what happens. <laughs> all the better to steal your potatoes. Um, oh, not bad. You did. Sorry. Dark. Again, Dark. sorry, I Dark. apologize. But well, my people were were being we're gonna get trolled. Off. You yes. won't. It's me we're saying it, and I'm so saying trolled. Oh, no, I, I got awful trolled for uh for calling the British Isles ones. Um, no, yeah, somebody gave out to us, and then we said, Hang on, they're named after Hi. Britain Whale, who was from Ireland. And then that person looked it up and said, Actually, fair enough, you're yeah. right. Yeah, so you know, they can come and troll yeah. me, and I'll give them a one slap it's negative comment. <laughs> Aaron yeah, it's not really true. He's too sensitive. Oh, bless him. Um, yeah, no, I shouldn't be on the internet. Yeah. I don't no, look no. either, so I wouldn't worry. It's so better, where can better. people find you on the internet? Oh, God, like well, now I probably shouldn't say. Given, the, given that you're open <laughs> to being trolled. Troll me. Don't troll, Julie, um, but just, you know. I think our fans are not, the, up to. No. not the trolling type. And um, watch your short films as they come out and see your sketches and things. Watch my comedy sketches. Your sketches are very funny. And I will rewatch them all. Uh, Julie Lockie, where can we find you? Uh, well, Julie Lockie on the YouTube. The oh, YouTube. Yeah. yeah, it's L O C K E Y. We'll put a link. Uh, we'll put a link. Uh, same. And same on Twitter and same on Insta Smug, as I like to um, call it. I don't really good. do a lot of Insta Smugging, but uh, maybe I should. Right. No, I don't I either. Don't. Uh, I never do. Yeah, but no, I should. No, no. I should. I haven't got my videos up on there, but I have got them on Twitter and I have got them on YouTube. It, and, it's a, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a, an entire hole you can fall into, um, yeah. and you're well, better off not. I Sarah literally has an account, so I can tag her and stuff. Um, yeah. In fact, you have two. Oh yeah, one of them is a by accident. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. I have two. I, I've accidentally two Instagram accounts. I never update either of them. If I don't follow you back, it's not personal. I don't follow anyone back. Um, <laughs> nice. It, nice, is, nice, nice. it is so people can tag me if I'm in stuff. And if anyone follows me, they'll see it, presumably see stuff I'm tagged in. Sarga, what's going on in Candle Tales for people to look forward to? Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, well, later today, it's too late for you to get tickets because it's in the past now. By the time you're hearing this podcast, <laughs> we're doing a show on MVP. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but time is just a construct, Sarka. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
We're also in Navan Fort on the 5th of August. Mm, yes. Which I think is still in the future, depending <laughs> on when this comes out. Uh, Fire up the DeLorean. <laughs> yeah, they'll have, they'll have missed the lexicon thing as well, and that's a conference. That's fine. Uh, and then what are we doing? Are we in? We have, we have a tour of, li- of the Mead Libraries. Mead Libraries are uh, doing a lovely uh, booking for us on the uh, 16th, 18th, and I believe. You got the 13th in the calendar here. Yeah, 13th. There we go. Um, the 13th, the 16th of August. And the 18th of August. So we'll be doing lots of uh, kid friendly shows for those. And we are, I think, back in MVP in Dublin in September the 20th. Yes, and we're also in the Undergrowth Festival uh, on the 20th and 21st of August. That's right. According That's right. to our calendar that I'm looking at right now, because I can't remember Excellent. what we're doing. Um, fantastic. Uh, looking forward to doing a few more live gigs and keeping things kind of lit as we can and spreading as much mythology as we are able to. Thank Being you very much for person. our yeah. Patreon supporters who've gone to CandidTales.com. Sorry, I mean, Patreon.com forward slash CandidTales. That's it. There yes. it is. Um, Sorry, I interrupted you loud that love. No, I do it all the time. I get it wrong. I literally just say candletales.com forward slash Patreon. I'm like, nope, wrong. No, nope. um, <laughs> other way. Wrong. You can also other go, way around. You can go onto our website, which is candletales.ie and see the linkies exactly. to all the things and figure yeah, it out from there awesome. if you want. Uh, thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for listening. And we will catch you at another thing in the future. Uh, yeah. Yay. Yeah. And thanks, Julie. Thank you. Hey, it's been right, laugh. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> God, is this how we're leaving it in a room? Yeah, we we'll love it. I love, love it. it. I'm mad for it. I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Julie. Bye.